size wise. So I mean, it's a great school. But it's just a there's a lot of kids there. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. Cypress Bay. Yeah. 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 It's a great school. Yeah. There's 5,000 kids in that school. Yeah. It's one of those. <coughs> Where did we stop last time? Transcription? Here? Further? Here? Is this where we stopped? Yes. All right. I just added new pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. I think these are the ones Dr. Apter was using. Right? The ones that you sent us now, the new ones? Doc, yeah, Professor Apter has all of my notes. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she has all my notes. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> What happened to the volume? This thing? Here? Worm. Not. Okay. We are going to first watch this mini clip of uh, protein synthesis, okay? And then I'll <coughs> explain. This is transcription and translation, okay? Let's talk. Yeah, let's. It's about only two minutes long, but it's cool. I like it. But the sound, gosh. Pardon me, you cannot.
Let's see, there's one more. What is that one? What's the website for that? You're just going to type in transcription. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, McGraw Hill also had some good ones. McGraw Hill. Yeah. 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 This is the same one that we just saw. What's the name of that enzyme, that blue molecule that is unzipping and making copy? RNA polymerase. Like DNA polymerase, copy DNA. This blue molecule that is making yellow copy is called RNA polymerase. I'm going to talk about that. I've not talked about that, so I'm going to go over that again. So, here we go. <coughs> the chain, out at the top, is a copy of the genetic message. And it's made of a close chemical cousin of DNA called RNA. The building blocks to make the RNA enter through an intake hole. They are matched to the DNA, letter by letter, to make an exact copy of the A's, C's, G's, and T's of the gene. The only difference is that in the RNA copy, the letter T is replaced with a closely related nucleic acid known as U. You are watching this process called transcription in real time. It's happening right now in almost every cell in your body. When the RNA copy is complete, it snakes away from the nucleus and into the outer part of the cell. Now remember, <clears throat> prokaryotes don't have a nucleus. So both this transcription and translation, second part, they take place in the cytoplasm. But this, this animation includes eukaryotic cells. So you have this nucleus. After the mRNA is made, mRNA leaves the nucleus, which is right here, and comes out into the cytoplasm where the ribosomes are. Okay? But in bacteria, we don't have a nucleus. So both transcription and translation takes place in the cytoplasm. Then, in a dazzling display of choreography, all the components of another molecular machine lock together around the RNA to form a miniature factory. Of what is that factory? These are the ribosome, the large subunit and the small subunit. The large subunit, yeah, ribosome. Or the ribosome. It translates the genetic information in the RNA into a string of amino acids that will become a protein. Special transfer molecules, the green triangles, bring each amino What are these little triangle molecules? These are tRNAs, truck RNAs, little. And these are carrying these amino acids. This red dot that you see is an amino acid. On one end, they have this amino acid, and the other end, they have anticodon. Anticodon. Acid to the ribosome. The amino acids are the small red tips attached to the transfer molecules. 
There are different transfer molecules for each of the 20 amino acids. They all carry a specific three-letter code that will be read by the machine. What are these dots right here? This is mRNA. What are these little patches that they are showing right here? Codons, the three letter words, codon. Codon, okay, that is going to match with, remember that tRNA with the anti codon of the tRNA. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Professor, which ones are the codons? These little spots that you see right here, the three letter right here, they're just rough, very rough right there, okay. White, yellow, green, yeah. Now we come to the heart of the process. Yeah. Inside the ribosome, the RNA is pulled through like a tape. The code for each amino acid is read off three letters at a time and matched to three corresponding letters on the transfer molecule. The molecule plugs in <coughs> the amino acid it carries Okay, just want to pause it for a second and <clears throat> show you something. See, these little green things that you see, they are tRNAs, tRNA, okay? In the ribosome, there are two areas where this truck or the tRNA enters right here. This is called the A site or amino acid site, okay? Now, let me draw this. <clears throat> I'm going to, when we talk about translation, I'll talk about it more, but what you're looking at in the blue part is right here. This is what's going on. Here is 30th portion of the ribosome, small part of the ribosome. It has two special areas on it. One is called A site. A for amino acid. Entrance. And then this is the P site or polypeptide or exit. Okay. So what happens is <clears throat> Here's your mRNA that we made in the first part of the protein synthesis. This is mRNA. What is going to be the first codon that's going to enter into the ribosome? Always, always. A, U, G. Always. That's the start codon. And then we can just make up some C, 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 G, 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 U, A, G. Then come these green entities called tRNAs. <clears throat> T, because they look like T, okay. They have anticodon. These three letter words on mRNA, they are called what? Codons. These are. And tRNA will bring in two things. T. R N A. It has anticodon. So if the codon is A U G, what is the anticodon tRNA carrying? A will combine with U, U with A, and G with C. That's the tRNA. This is the anticodon right there. So, and this codon and anticodon are going to meet at the A site. What else is that tRNA carrying? It has a head. James? Sure. Very good. Very good. Now, how did you come up with MET, please? Tell me. Why MET? Yeah. Because if it has UAC, the only amino acid it can carry is MET. How does it know? Because you see, when it comes over here, Look at your codon chart, if you have your codon chart handy. Okay. One of the mistakes that students make on the test, instead of looking up the codon, they start looking up the anti-codon in the codon chart, and they get the wrong amino acid. Okay, let me show you. Um, do you have the codon chart handy? Okay, let me pull that up. <coughs> We'll come back to that in a minute. Right here. So if you look at this codon chart, which, which three-letter word would you look up in this codon chart? 
AUG or UAC? AUG, because that's the one that came from the DNA. Okay, not UAC. And AUG is MET, right here, MET. All right. How about the second tRNA? Which, what do you think the second tRNA is carrying? Tell me, please. So the first one is AUG. Second one is carrying what? GGG, and the amino acid is what? So CCC, you don't look up GGG, CCC. Pro, proline, okay. So the second tRNA in the line will be proline, P-R-O-G-G-G. What happens is, okay, after the codon and anticodon, they meet together, now comes the <clears throat> large portion of the ribosome. Now you have a complete ribosome that you see. This is 30s portion, this is 50s portion of the ribosome. Now you have a whole factory, okay? Now what? There's a codon and an anticodon. If this truck stays in the entrance, can the other trucks enter? No. So this truck must move from A site to P site. So this is going to move this forward like this. In the animation, what you see, the green little patches coming in and leaving, coming in and leaving. This is what happened. Now before they leave, let me draw another diagram. Okay. A, wait, A side is entrance and P side is exit. Exit, exactly. Yeah. So this is how it's going to look like. AUG will move to P site. CCC now is at A site. U, A, C, G, 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 P, R, O, M, E, T. All right. See? This whole thing moved forward, and this A, U, G moved from A to P site, and C, C, C is now at A site. It's going in this direction. mRNA going that way. Okay. And the ribosome is going this way. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. <clears throat> now what? Once both the positions are occupied, then what? The first truck that came in, this one, is going to leave. But before it leaves, a peptide bond will be made between these two, like this. In other words, it will lose its head. Literally, it's going to unload its cargo. And what is this called now? Without the amino acid, it will be bumped outside, leave. You have unloaded your cargo. This MET is going to connect to proline, the next one. Okay? So there's a peptide bond. This is called naked, naked or free tRNA without the head without the head, okay? So this process is going to go on and on and on until what? What is this? UAG, stop codon. When this stop codon enters into A site, what happens? There is no tRNA for that. When the stop codon, let me just go ahead, okay? Let's say now U a G. It could be U A G, U A A, or U G A. One of the three nonsense codon. They enter into A site. No tRNA. No anticodon. This is the message to the ribosome: stop making protein. So you have start codon right here at the beginning, and you have a stop codon at the end. All genes they have start and stop codon. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes mutation takes place. Mutation takes place, and you may have UAA here. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to go over that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> AUG. Okay. AUG. Then you have a, a mutation right next to it. Then what? Mutations happen. Genes go abnormal. So. The process will stop right after the first amino acid. That's a mutation. We are going to talk about David. 
they are going to go into the cytoplasm, pick up another amino acid, come right back. And the truck is going to keep its, this is kind of permit to enter into the construction site. So you're going to keep its permit, go into the cytoplasm, pick up another head, and come right back. Okay? So these trucks are used over and over and over again. Yeah. So here, okay, let me, I've not even, yeah, let me show you what we were doing right here. So let's just finish this first. This is adding to the growing protein of the chain. Right here. <coughs> Again, you are watching this in real time. And after a few seconds, the assembled protein starts to emerge from the ribosome. Ribosomes can make any kind of protein. It just depends what genetic message you feed in on the RNA. In this case, the end product is hemoglobin. The cells in our bone marrow churn out a hundred trillion molecules of it per second. Um, a protein that has 300 amino acids, 300 amino acid is made within about 20 seconds. That's how fast this process is. A protein that has a minimum of 300 amino acids, 20 seconds, from DNA to protein, 20 seconds. That's how fast this process is. All right, let me go back to my notes and start with transcription right here. So what is transcription? <clears throat> transcription is making RNA, RNA, or you can also say ch changing, converting genetic code into codon. Would that be transcription? Transcription is a process in which you make RNA, but where is this RNA coming from? DNA. Okay? So a process in which genetic code, where did this mRNA come from? DNA, right? All right. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to erase this for a second, right here, and draw my sense DNA. Sense strand of DNA. Go ahead, give me the sense DNA, please. A, <coughs> T, U, U, A, G, C. This area in the DNA right here, TAC is always, always called the promoter site. The promoter site. That's where the transcription starts. Promoter site. TAC you're from AUG. Exactly. And then CCC will be what? G, G, G. And G, G, G will be C, C, C. UAG will be what? A. T, C. And what is ATC? This is called the terminator site, ATC, which makes what? Stop codon. Stop codon. So TAC in DNA is promoter. ATC is terminator. Terminator site. Okay. Now, the definition I was going to tell you, one definition is the process in which the DNA makes RNA, right? That's transcription. What are these three-letter words in DNA? These are called genetic codes, genetic code. This is codon, but this is genetic code. Genetic code. So another definition of transcription is what? Change of genetic code into codon. Changing genetic code into codon. That's also transcription, right? Okay. Same thing. <coughs> exactly. Sense DNA is genetic code. mRNA is codon. Codons. Where you replace T with U, U. DNA has T's, RNAs have U's. Okay? So genetic code has T, codons have U's. Jim? 
Oh, it depends on the need of the bacteria, need of the cell. Let's suppose, okay, DNA is double-stranded, right? This is sense. Okay, let's suppose this is where the active gene is located. The cell needs, cell is growing in gelatin. Right, yep. Mm -hmm. Cell is growing in gelatin, but it has no lactase. The opposite strand is the gene for lactase. So this is going to be sense. The other one is going to be antisense. But tomorrow you take this bacteria, put it in lactose that has no gelatin. This strand will become sense and the other will become antisense. Swap, absolutely, absolutely. Whichever part of the DNA is used to make RNA is called sense strand. But both strands have genes. Both strands have genes on them. <coughs> so the process of this uh, uh, transcription needs what? RNA nucleotides. And what are RNA nucleotides? A, U, G, and C. Those are the RNA nucleotides. How do they differ from DNA nucleotides? DNAs have T, A, T, G, C, but R A, U, G, C. Time, RNA polymerase. Only one strand, which is called the sense strand, is used to make RNA. Now, why is that important? When you replicate DNA, when you replicate DNA, how many strands do you replicate? One or two? Okay. When you replicate DNA, okay, let me go back. La, 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 la. Here's the DNA replication. DNA in the lag phase of the growth. How many strands are used? One or both? One. Both. Both. One is called leading strand, the other one is called lagging strand. If mommy is not going to copy the other strand, the baby is mutated. So both strands are used in DNA replication. Both strands are replicated in DNA replication. You see, here's mommy, right? Here the baby, after replication, you have identical strands. That's called binary fission. One cell divides into two genetically identical cells. So both strands of the DNA must be replicated exact same way, okay? But in protein synthesis, how many strands do we use? One, one. Why? Because this may be a different gene here. This may be for gelatinase. This may be for lactase. So whichever gene you want to make, the, whichever protein you want to make, that portion of the DNA will be used. So let me show you. Right here. Yes. Yeah. Here's protein synthesis, the first part. Look at this right here. How many strands? Two strands. See, they're uncoiled. This is where the active gene is, right there. Okay, see the two strands are separated. Why? Because only one of them, right here, here's one strand. This is going to be transcribed. You cannot say replicate. Transcribed because you are making what? mRNA transcribed. Strand is used once. You see this green? That is your mRNA. So only one strand is going to be used to make RNA. Once all the RNA is made, DNA recoils. Recoils. Okay. So that's not the replication point of the cell? Nope. No, no, no. That's not replication. This is transcription. Transcription. Replication, you'll have to duplicate the whole DNA, entire DNA because the copies need to be, to be given to the baby. Because here we are not replicating DNA. We are making protein. Yeah. yeah. You see this right here, promoter site? What do we have in the promoter site right here in this gene? TAC. That is the promoter site. And what is the terminator site right, right here? Terminator site. ATC. ATC or one of the three. It could be UAA, UGA, UGC. Okay. So once this little purple blob, I'm, I'm sorry, purple, light blue blob, which is R RNA polymerase, it reaches the terminator site, the process stops. So transcription, a process in which you use sense strand of DNA to make what? RNA. That is transcription. <clears throat> or, as I said, 
what are these? Genetic code. Conversion of genetic code into what? Codons. Codons. That is called transcription. <coughs> okay. Okay. This is the enzyme. Remember, please make sure that you can differentiate between RNA polymerase and DNA polymerase. What does DNA polymerase do? Replicates DNA. It makes DNA. What does RNA polymerase do? Makes RNA. Okay? DNA polymerase makes DNA. RNA polymerase makes RNA. Okay? Region of the DNA that ends the signal uh, and signals the end of the tra uh, transcription is called the terminator site. In parentheses, you can say one of the stop, three stop codons. And finally, once the mRNA is made, the DNA recoils and mRNA is sent where? Now remember, mRNA has the message, right? Here's the DNA. DNA gives the message to the messenger. Messenger right here. Takes the message where? Ribosome. Ribosome. To the factory. And convert this message into what? Protein. Protein. Okay. That process is called translation. So now the, ribo the mRNA goes to the ribosome. Any transcription before I go forward? On the, t on the test, okay? Yeah, pardon me? I will repeat it at the end, or may maybe in my office one more time because I have to finish this, okay? There must be something that you understand, okay? Okay, or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this is what I want you to do, Beverly. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Jackie. <clears throat> All right, here's DNA, okay? Here's DNA, C, 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 G, A, C, T, T, T. Replicate it for me, please. Replicate it for me. Okay, so when I say replicate, what are you making, RNA or DNA? DNA. DNA. So you, I'm asking you to replicate it. So that will be G. G, C, T, G, A, A. All right, good, very good, simple. Replication, DNA to DNA. Now please transcribe it. Aha, very good. You see, you need to know which strand is the sent strand. Which one to transcribe? Remember, only one strand is used. So I have to tell you, please transcribe the bottom strand, which is the sent strand. So let's make this one sent strand. So it's a replicating one only. Anti. You always transcribe the sent strand. Let's go ahead and transcribe it, please. C, C. This is important right here. U, 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 because now you have made mRNA. And this is transcription. This is it. A process in which you take the sense strand of DNA and make what? mRNA. Or, as I said before, taking genetic codes. These are what? Genetic codes. Genetic codes and converting them into what? Codons. Codons. Codon. So each three letter word right here is codon right here. Codon. Little better? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Now let's take this RNA and make protein now. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead and please transcribe this strand of DNA. Go ahead, transcribe this strand of DNA, please. A, G, G, C, G, C, C, U, 
you. Very good. Good, 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 good. What do you see problem here? Do you see any problem with this, this sense strand of DNA? It has a stop codon at the beginning, not the start codon. Instead of TAC, it has ATC. Okay, that's my goof up. I apologize. Okay, when I was typing. I didn't mean to, but on the test, I will do this. I will put in a start a stop codon at the beginning. What do you do then? Exactly. You can make the protein. The translation will stop at the first codon. That's it. Although it was unintentional, but it worked out okay. <laughs> okay. So please change it to TAC. Go ahead. Change this to TAC, please, and then transcribe it. Change this to TAC, please. Swap T. Got it. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> okay. Let's take that one. <clears throat> All right. Okay. T A C. Someone read it to me, please. C G C. G G A. Huh? C C C. Okay. C C C. A T T. Okay. That's your sense DNA, right? Transcribe, you make your mRNA, mRNA. That will be a U G. Remember this right here, TAC is what? The promoter site, promoter site. And ATT is what? The terminator site, end, okay? So C will be? G, oops, G, C, G, C, C, what, U, and G, 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 U, A, A, which is the stop run. Now, could you please take out your Quran charts? Or let me just pull mine up and we will practice that. <clears throat> TAC, exactly. TAC. Yep. Okay, let's translate that now, please. Okay, translation simply means take this mRNA and read these codons in the codon chart. So AUG, you, all, you don't even have to look up. AUG always make what? Yes. MET. And what is GCG? LNN. Hmm? ALA? LNN. 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 ALA. 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 And what is CCU? PRO. PRO. And GGG? Glycine. G L Y. So this process right here, where you took mRNA and you converted them into protein, this is called what? Translation. 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 The first step was transcription. Transcription. Second, translation. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell you a little bit more detail about this translation, which is not going to be on your test. But remember, this translation is taking place where? At the ribosome, right? And <clears throat> so you have mRNA, right? mRNA. What else do you need for the process of translation to take place? What type of RNA? You need tRNA. Do you need tRNA for, trans for translation? Of course you do.
because remember, if I draw this for you right here, translation is going to look like this. <coughs> for translation, you have codon, which is going to match with what? Anticodon, U, A, C. MET. Remember, this is tRNA, tRNA, which is carrying the amino acid and the anticodon. And where where is this meeting taking place? Ribosome. Ribosome. At where? Which site? A site. Remember A site and P site. Okay. So this is A site. Again, right here. This one will be C G C. I'm just, okay, ALA. So you do need what? For the process of translation to take place, you need mRNA, you need tRNA. How about ribosomal RNA? You need rRNA? Do you need rRNA for, the, for translation? Sure, if you don't have the ribosome, how can you translate it? So you need all three. You need mRNA, you need tRNA, and you need the factory. So you need all three types of RNA for translation to take place. Okay? How about transcription? How many types of RNA you need for the process of transcription? Very good. Uh, only one mRNA only. For transcription, you only need mRNA. You don't need tRNA for transcription from DNA to RNA, do you? No. You don't need ribosomal RNA, do you? No. So ribosomal RNA and tRNA are involved in translation. Okay. So for transcription, Only and only what? M RNA. And for translation, all three. For translation, you need M RNA, you need T RNA to transfer amino acid and anticodon, and you need ribosomal RNA for what? For the ribosome. Ribosomes are made up of ribosomal RNA. So for translation, you need all three, but for transcription, only one. Make sense? <coughs> all righty. So translation, what is translation? A process in which you convert mRNA information into protein. Where? At the ribosome. That is called translation. All right. Now this is what how the process takes place. Okay. This is what you saw in the animation. Okay. Here are the two portion of the ribosome. Now this is not going to be on your. This is FYI. Okay. <clears throat> Just a li little detail. Large portion of the ribosome, small portion of the ribosome. Here's your mRNA that you made in transcription. Here's AUG. It attaches where? At the A site. They are not showing that. That's why it's not a very good diagram. Here's the A site right here, and here's the P site. They have labeled P site, but where's the A site? I don't know. Anyways, <clears throat> so AUG attaches to A site. The tRNA comes in. What? UAC. What type of amino acid is it carrying? Uh, here we go. Anticodon is? UAC right here, and the amino acid is MET. Where do they meet? At the A site. Then the ribosome moves forward, and then you see this right here, the whole complex has moved from A site to B site. So the second codon enters into the A site. Here comes the second tRNA with its anticodon and amino acid. So the first one will leave. You see this is right here? UAC, this is called naked tRNA or empty truck because there is no head. Where did the head go? Attached to the second amino acid right here. There's a peptide bond between the two. 
before the second one goes, is going to lose its head too. It's going to hop on top of the third one, and the fourth one, and the fifth one. Exactly. Right. That's the amino acid chain right there. Yeah. Here's your chain, and when does the process stop? Right here. See right here? What is that? One of the stop codons entered into A site. Is there a tRNA for that? No. There is no tRNA for a stop codon, and this signals the end of the translation. Exactly. Yeah. Once the stop codon enters into A site, now the protein synthesis is not complete yet. The two parts of the ribosomes, they must separate from each other in order to release the protein. Okay? There are some antibiotics that prevent the separation of the ribosome. So the protein is made, but the cell cannot use it. So in order to, for the cell to use this protein, the two parts of the ribosome, 50S and 30S, they must separate. And only then the protein will be released. Translation. OK. I'm going to give you one <clears throat> um, for practice. OK. We have time. All right. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, this is your scent strand. Make the protein, please. Go ahead, tell me, make the protein. I'll pull the codon chart for you. This is what you have to do on the test. I'll give you DNA, and you have to make the protein. Here's the codon chart. Ah, okay, I forgot to mention one thing. You must start from the start codon. Okay? You must start from the start codon. Always. 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 Okay. If you read the instructions very carefully on the test, okay? If you don't read the instructions, you'll be going, you won't find the answer. Oh, I'm not sure yet, but try it. <laughs> okay? Yep. You're thinking correctly. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> yes, I will give you the chart on the test. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's right here. Sorry. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to tell you, I have not talked about it yet. We will talk about it, but let's practice that now. <clears throat> mutation takes place. A mutation takes place. Okay. How would that mutation change this protein? A mutation has occurred on this DNA. How would that 
mutation change this protein? Yeah. It depends. I have to give you more information. What type of mutation? Okay. Frame shift, point, nonsense. And where? At what nucleotide position? So if we number them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, so on. Now I tell you that, uh, all right, a frame shift mutation. A frame shift mutation is a mutation in which you either add new nucleotides or delete new nucleotides, delete old nucleotides. Frame shift. Like remember thymine dimer in UV light? Two thymines are connected to each other. Okay, that is an example of frame shift mutation in which you delete the two T's. Okay, so I tell you a frame shift mutation has occurred after nucleotide number five and two new thymines are added. At nucleotide number five, a frame shift mutation has occurred, and you have added two new T's here. How would that change the protein? Now you can answer. You make your new RNA, you make your new protein. So you now you have a completely new genetic code. Okay, the first code is fine, but the second is original is G A S G, but the new one is what? CTG, okay. okay, CCA and then like that, okay. So TTA will become A, A, C, U, C, G, and G, G, U, okay. So the new protein will be what? The first one is fine, AUG, so that is MET. Second is what? AAC is what? ASN, aspergine, UCG, UCG, SCRENE, and GGU, GGU. GLY, GLY. So this is your new protein. Yes. <coughs> oh, A, right here. A, A, C, yeah, U, C, G, like this one right here. Okay, because we are adding two new, so you have new genetic codes now. Okay. Mutation. Mutation. C -C yep. Which is yep. Mutation. I could ask you to delete. A mutation has taken place at nucleotide number eight, okay. and a G is deleted. So I will tell you what type of mutation and what you are doing. So your job is to write down the new DNA, new RNA, and the new protein. So exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> All righty. Oh, one more. All right. <clears throat> yep. First one is the same. All the others are different. Now, what makes you digest your food within three to four hours? Okay, how can you digest? Some people cannot. Okay, uh, like pythons and all those snakes, they eat maybe once a month, okay, or something like that. Big meal, okay. Uh, really, <laughs> we are not like that. We can digest our food within a few hours. How? This is how we, what happened. This is your mRNA, okay. Now think of mRNA as a compu computer, as a computer. And here are the red dots are your printers, printer. If one computer is hooked up to one printer right here, and it takes one minute to print one copy, here's one copy of the protein. 
How many copies can you make in one minute? One. Now imagine 1,000 printers, 1,000 printers connected to the same computer. How many copies can you make in one minute? 1,000. That's how, that's why our protein synthesis is so efficient that your body, one mRNA is translated by, not by one ribosome. If you make one copy at a time, it's going to take you months to digest your food. So once you eat your food, hundreds of ribosomes that translate the same mRNA. So you have what? Multiple copies of the same protein, same enzyme, same protein. So you can digest your food much, much faster. And this structure in which one mRNA is translated by many ribosomes, this is called polyribosome. Polyribosome. Multiple copies of the protein by many ribosomes. Imagine if one ribosome is reading it and making one copy at a time, how slow the process is going to be. Okay? But that doesn't happen. Okay? This is an actual reality. Many hundreds of ribosomes, they read one mRNA. Make sense? All right. Now, these are the two topics that we skipped in Chapter 5. <clears throat> Remember competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition, and feedback inhibition? The last two that I skipped were enzyme repression and enzyme induction. Okay? okay. Not all proteins are made all the time, right? Okay? Not all proteins are made all the time. Okay? But there are some proteins that are made all the time, right? They are called constitutive proteins. There is no regulation for those proteins. Okay? The term regulation is only for those proteins that are not made all the time. Once the bacterium has synthesized flagella by making flagellin protein, do you think it will keep on making flagellin? No. Once the bacteria has synthesized this capsule, would it keep on making that protein? No. Right? Okay. <clears throat> or if the bacteria has digested, when, if the bacterium is growing in lactose, only then you need lactase. Right? If there is no lactose, the bacteria doesn't need lactase. So how does the bacteria control the synthesis of those proteins that are not made all the time? That is gene regulation. And the model that explains gene regulation is called operon model. Operon. What is operon? Okay. My own simple diagram, then I'll show you what you have in your textbook. <clears throat> Proteins those proteins that are digestive digestive proteins or they are also called catabolic 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 proteins or enzymes. And others are anabolic or constructive. Anabolic or constructive protein. Or synthetic, synthetic proteins. And the model that explains why these proteins are not made all the time, it is called operon model, operon. And what is operon? Operon is a segment, a piece of DNA, piece of DNA with many genes, especially four special genes on them, four special areas. Okay, operon is a string of genes or segment of DNA. Okay. And this piece of DNA has four special areas on it. Okay. Now before I tell you the areas, 
the operon that controls the synthesis of digestive proteins or enzyme, it is called inducible operon. Inducible. Inducible operon. Operon. And the one that regulates the synthesis of anabolic, this is called repressible operon. Repressible operon. Both operons, they have the same four areas on their DNA. Exact same four areas. The first area, this is DNA. And so is this one. The first area is called regulator site, R. I will just put R for now. Regulator area. Both of them, they have that R. Regulator site. Second is called the promoter site, where the TAC is. Promoter site, P site, promoter site. Third is called the operator site, O for operator. And the last area of the operon is called structural genes. Structural genes. Okay. Now let's suppose the very first mo operon model that was discovered in bacteria was called LAC, L-A-C, L-A-C, LAC operon, that regulates the synthesis of enzyme that digests lactose. Lactose. When there is no lactose in the medium, would the bacteria make lactase? No. So let's say no lactose. You can also say no inducer, no inducer, no substrate, same thing, okay? How would the bacteria not make the enzyme lactase? By the way, the information for lactase is right here in the structural genes. Info for lactase. This is the area where the information for the enzyme is located, right here, structural genes. And same is here, anabolic. Let's say the bacteria wants to make flagellin or pilin. Where is the information? Right here. Information for protein. Info for, let's say pilin. I'll take the example of pilin. For pilin or could be any anabolic protein. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's compare the two operons. Okay. Both have same areas, right? Okay. The function of the first part of this uh, area of the um, operon, regulatory gene, in both operons, the, the, per, the function is to make a protein called a repressor protein. Repressor protein. What's the difference? Here's the big difference. In inducible operon, when this repressor is made, it is active. So I'll put active repressor proton, protein. Active repressor protein. But in repressible operon, the protein that is made, repressor protein that is made, it is inactive. That's the major difference between the two operons. Inactive repressor and active repressor. Now what does active and inactive mean? <clears throat> active means repressor that can attach itself to the operator. That is active repressor. What is active repressor? As soon as it is made, it binds to the operator right here. 
that is called active repressor. Sure. Active repressor is a protein that can bind. As soon as it is made, it has the right shape to do what? To attach to the operator. How about here? Can it bind to the operator? No, inactive. Inactive. Okay. Now, by binding to the operator, what does it do? Okay, this is what it does. <clears throat> Remember the process of transcription takes place with what enzyme? RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase binds to the promoter site right here. So this blue dot that I have right here, this represents the enzyme RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase binds to the promoter site. But where is the information for the lactase? Right here. So it starts to move towards the structural genes, try to make the enzyme. But it is blocked by what? Active repressor. So the purpose, the function of active repressor is what? To block the passage of RNA polymerase. One more time. The function of active repressor is to attach to the operator and block the passage of RNA polymerase. If RNA polymerase cannot go to the structural genes, do you think there will be transcription? No transcription. This DNA will not be converted into mRNA, right? No transcription, no translation. No translation, no translation, no lactase. No lactose, no lactase. Right? No lactose, no lactase. So no active repressor? Yep. Active. Who is preventing it from making lactase? active repressor. How? By blocking the passage of RNA polymerase, by preventing it to go to the structural genes. Yes? Very good. Yeah. But I don't use, like to use the word repressible because then you'll get confused. It blocks or stops. Yeah. Okay. Now let's put, let's put, yep. Yeah. I'm sorry. What does that mean? No problem. Okay. Let's put Let's put this bacteria in lactose. Now, lactose is present. Okay. When you don't drink milk, do you need this enzyme lactase? No. So similarly, when bacteria does not have the substrate, why would it make this enzyme? Like, if I don't eat jello, I'm not going to make gelatinase, right? Okay. Same, similarly here, bacteria, no substrate, no substrate, no enzyme. Now let's put the substrate in. Let's put the bacteria in milk. Here's lactose. Here's lactose. Now lactose present. Lactose is present. <coughs> what do you think lactose will do? Lactose or inducer? Inducer slash substrate. When the substrate is present, do we need the enzyme now? Absolutely. What do you think the substrate is going to do? Substrate is going to make this inactive repressor, I'm sorry, active repressor into? Inactive. How? How? By binding to the allosteric side. Very good. Remember when we learned? Okay. Okay. So, Substrate binds to the allosteric site and changes what? Active site. Now, is this repressor active? No. It cannot, inactive repressor cannot bind to the operator, right? RNA polymerase has no blockage. It is going to zoom right through structural genes. Transcription will take place 
translation will take place, lactase will be made. There is no blockage, so enzyme is made. Enzyme is going to digest lactose, which is right here, right? So enzyme is present. Once all the substrate is digested, do you still need the enzyme? No. no. What do you think is going to happen? Substrate is going to come off from the allosteric site. Inactive repressor will become active. And where does it go when it is active? Operator. And blocks the passage of RNA polymerase. I hope it makes sense. OK. OK. Now, what's the difference between, quickly, difference between inducible and op uh, and repressible. One major difference. Remember, this is catabolic, digestive. This is anabolic, constructive. The, the cell is, here is a bacterium, and it is trying to make what? Pylin. Pylin. Here's the pilus right here. Let's suppose we need five five pylin molecules to construct this pilus. Five molecules, okay? <clears throat> now remember, in this case, re repressor is inactive, right? So RNA polymerase is going to bind here. Any blockage? No. It's inactive. It is going to go to the structural genes, and we are going to make our Transcription will take place, translation will take place, and here's our pylon, right here, pylon. How many molecules do we need? Five. This is number six. Six, extra. What do you think that extra pylon is going to do? Bind to the allosteric side of this inactive repressor and make it active. And where does the active repressor go? Operator. So this is feedback inhibition. When the end product is plentiful, when the end product is plentiful, it shuts off its own synthesis. How? By making the inactive repressor active. Pilot. Okay. So the major difference between the two is what? Active repressor inactive repressor, catabolic protein, anabolic proteins. Make sense? Good day. Pardon me? Um, I was trying to escape. <laughs> I actually... <laughs> Yes, I'm going to be in my office. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to post this DVD, which is genetics review, online. I'm going to give it to the gentleman who is recording. So this is the review for genetics, okay, which is going to be online. This whole chapter, chapter 8 review, okay? So that's what we have Saturday review, but you will have this review online, okay? Uh, I think it is Tuesday. Yep, Tuesday. So, I'm assuming that that's supposed to be a really good review, right? Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. That's the idea. I know. But you have pretest. Remember, you got the pretest? Yes. Yes, and the key to the pretest was sent out yesterday. Is this Yep, in your email, BC email. Yeah.